Hi everyone. Have you ever thought we can revise a chapter, entire chapter in 10 minutes? Well, I have taken this challenge and let's see if we can revise the chapter of kidney run system in just 10 minutes. We'll discuss the images, we'll discuss the pathophysiology and in short the clinical features of each and every disease. Let's start it. Let's start with the normal, bilkul normal biopsy of a kidney. So in a normal biopsy, what you know, understand is, this is a glomerulus. These are all the tubules you can see. And between this area, these are all the interstitial areas. Okay. So tubules, 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 and tubules. Okay. Sorry. Glomerulus, 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 and glomerulus. And these are all the tubules. Okay. In between them, there are interstitial areas. Okay. Now, when you call this biopsy as complete, you call this when you have these finding features. Remember, you should get for a global disease a five glomerulus you should be able to see. For a tubular intestinal disease, around six to ten. And for a transplant kidney, I should be able to see at least seven glomerulus. But so this is a basic fact. Let's move to the next level. See. Now, let's see a normal glomerulus in a bit more detail. A parietal cell. These are all the capillaries. Now, these are all the mesangial areas. This pink area, all the mesangial areas. And these are all the tubules around it. The same thing is seen on a uh, electron microscopy as mesangial areas, the capri areas, look at the endothelial areas, okay. Above this, look at the podocytes, which is arranged like a foot process around these cells, okay. Now, based on this, I'll start with the two types of syndromes, nephritic and nephrotic. In nephritic syndrome, I'll first discuss PSGN, RPGN, and we'll discuss IG nephropathy. In nephrotic syndrome, I'll discuss the other findings, like I'll discuss minimal change, I'll discuss MBGN, MGN, and the FSCS findings. The first one is PSGN. So a PSGN, as you all know, is seen after episode of cerebral pharyngitis, and the disease, you find a lot number of infiltration of the neutrophils, called as endo and exo proliferations. You can look at the humps, sub-epithelial humps, and look at the starry sky appearance, what you see is the IgG or IgM along with C3 deposition in the sub-epithelial areas. This finding is often seen in a PSGN and remember PSGN is a condition which is not treated by the antibiotics per se but is treated by the steroids. Remember it's a type, yeah, it's a type 3 hypertension reaction occurring after group A beta hemolytic streptococci. Okay. Second is RPGN. In RPGN, look at the flea bitten kidneys. This is a flea bitten kidney, look at the multiple hemolytic spots over the kidney. And I hope you remember it is seen in other conditions like the pan subacute bacterial endocarditis and also in the malignant hypertension. Look at the crescents you see in the microscopy of the RPGN like findings. A crescent is seen in the RPGN. Now remember, a RPGN is seen as type 1, type 2, type 3. The type 1 RPGN is seen as an anti germ disease having good pressure. Type 2 includes all the immune complexes disease and type 3 includes a posse immune like the, like the vaginus, like the uh, microscopic polyangiitis and also it includes the third one which you all know is microscopic polyangiitis and the Churchstroff syndrome. Well, what you find here is these are all the GBM which is born broken down. So broken GBM is a finding of RPGN. Okay. RPGN type 1 on type 2. You can differentiate them by looking at the first microscopic features. The RPGN type 1 has linear deposits. The linear look at very sharp and silky deposition of the GBM because of antibody deposition only. However, when you look at the type 2, it's a granular deposits. The granular deposits is a type 2 deposition because it shows the immune complex deposits over it. The third one is IG nephropathy. Uh, IG nephropathy occurs, remember, 1 to 2 days. This is a very important fact. 7 to 21 days history is of PSGN. 1 to 2 day history is of IG nephropathy. So, 1 to 2 days after an episode of pharyngitis, presenting with a gross hematuria may be IG nephropathy. If you do kidney biopsy, you get mesangial deposits. So, these are all the deposition of IgA. It can be IgG or IgM also. Yes. And that along with C3 is seen in the deposition in the IgM. Look at the fluorescence. Look at the fluorescence deposition here. And these are all the IgA deposition you expect in the in the IgA nephropathy called as mesangioproliferative glomerulonephritis. Okay. Now, we'll move forward and now discuss the other findings. Like, look at this. I hope you got this point. It is, it is a thickening of, it's a thickening of the mesang GBM. Thickening of GBM is seen in what is called as MGN. So, remember for MGN called as membranous glomerulonephritis, you have two questions. Number one, etiology. It can be infections. 
it can be hep b hep c it can be hiv it can be leprosy it can be malaria and it can be tumors it can be a case of drugs or can be just an idiopathic cause remember an antibody very important is anti phospholipase a2 antibody also involved in the mgn a uh, mgn will show you thickening of the gvm in light microscopy but remember if you do a silver staining you get a very peculiar spike and dome appearance again very very important for the mgn okay look at this one it is mi minimal change sees so look at the podocytes and the podocytes are put process so what happens in minimal changes in light microscopy you don't get any change the only finding you expect is what in the yeah in the em so look at the normal podocytes with a food process and look at the effaced podocytes without a food process look at this the effaced podocyte without food process it is what is called as a podocytopathy which is also seen in F fsgs in diabetes and in mgn also it's called minimal changes remember no prior history a sudden onset of proteinuria should point towards minimal changes with an excellent prognosis of 99 percent cases recovering within a matter of just six weeks well look at the fsgs what is fsgs normal glomerulus normal glomerulus but look at the sclerosis glomerulus and remember when you see a sclerosis only in a part of the kidney it is called as segmental if you see this in less than 50 percent of the glomerulus it is called as focal so here we get a focal segmental glomerulosis few things are important here like first etiology very important reflux nephropathy hypertensive nephropathy sickle cell massive obesity and not to forget hypertension remember it can be seen as a finding of a congenital nephrotic syndrome also like the mns uh, the nphs type 2 and the type 3 also remember one thing the fsgs is also seen in hiv which shows two things collapsing glomerular nephropathy with tough necrosis it is seen as collapsing with the worst prognosis is collapsing only so there's one more important thing you should know about the fsgs in hiv at least okay this disease is actually of mpgn well mpgn stands for yeah mesangioproliferative glomerulonephritis that means there's a pro the proliferation of mesangium gvm and capris and hence the name is called as mesangiocapri glomerulonephritis or mesangioproliferative glomerulonephritis well what you see here is actually a tram track appearance remember mpgn is of two types type 1 and type 2 the type 1 mpgn is found or shows a sub endothelial deposit with its typical tram track appearance but type 2 mpgn it shows a mesangial hypercellularity along with the intra membranous deposits intra membranous deposits so type 1 and type 2 this one more thing you should understand is something called as c3 glomerular nephropathy a c3 glomerular nephropathy has a deposition of c3 the c3 level decreases but do not have a kidney biopsy finding like mpgn so it's a new thing you should all know about it do not forget the mpgn main etiology is hepatitis c with or without triglobinemia it can be infections others it can be tumors it can be the other findings like it can be drugs so just like mgn they also have multiple multiple etiologies it is called as mpgn we can't stop this without discussing diabetes. So diabetes has two types of finding. One is diffuse and one is nodular. Nodular has a finding of camel still will cell region with the most specific finding of diabetes. However, the most common finding is a diffuse glomerular nephropathy. The diagnosis is done often by a micro, uh, micro albuminuria which has an albumin level between 30 to 300 milligram per 24 hours urine. You can also look at the ACR albumin creatinine ratio. It is called as diabetes. Other findings being, yes, you guessed it correct. It is called as capsular drops, fibrin caps, and not to forget the diffuse and the nodular glomerular nephropathies. From all these paranephritis, from all these glomerular nephropathies, we now move to paranephritis. In a paranephritis, the problem is in the tubules and in the interstitial, not in the glomerulus. So one finding is a granulocontract kidney seen in the chronic glomerular nephropathy. You can find Notable infiltration in the acute stages, while what is called as a very importantly thyroidation of tubules in a chronic pyelonephritis. You can often see a big stone called a stag horn calculi in the chronic pyelonephritis along with the granular contracted kidneys. Now, what do tumors you also find here is what is called as a Wim's tumor. Well, Wim's tumor is also called as nephroblastomas. It shows a triphasic pattern with an area of tubules, an epithelial pattern, 
stroma, the mesenchymal, and the small round tumor cells. So three phases of tumor is seen in Wilkes tumor. Do not forget the name of syndromes: the Wagner syndrome, Dennis Tarr syndromes, and the Beckwith Weidman syndrome associated with the Wilkes tumor. Now this tumor is called neuroblastomas. The neuroblastoma is often shows a homo heterozygote because it belongs to the tumor what is called a spinet. Now a homo heterozygote is often a finding you see in differentiated type of neuroblastomas, but an undifferentiated tumor will show you neuroblasts. I will show you a Schwannian stroma, which is also an undifferentiated nerve finding. I hope you like this video. If you really want this type of content coming up, please like this video and let me know what other videos you want in just ten minutes before your actual exam kicks in. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and let your friends know about this amazing content that I can give you. Thank you. God bless you all. Best wishes.